So just in time for Thanksgiving, Disney Plus dropped the first two episodes of the new MCU Phase 4 series, Hawkeye. Now, going into this, I was honestly not too excited about Hawkeye. And granted, I said the same thing about Loki, and the show wound up being probably my favorite of the MCU Disney Plus shows so far. So I'm going to give this a chance. And what they did here was they dropped two episodes. So what I'm going to do with this review is I'm going to basically review both of them here on this video and give you my thoughts on both of them individually. So we're going to start, first of all, with the very first episode of Hawkeye, which was called Never Meet Your Heroes. And it starts back in 2012 as a prologue where we have a young Kate Bishop. She's with her parents in her apartment in New York, and it's in the middle of the New York City 2012 invasion that happened in Avengers, the first Avengers movie. She sees Hawkeye being heroic, and it kind of like sticks with her, like, you know, she becomes a fangirl. And it's interesting because, like, she was a little kid. It's so weird because I remember seeing Avengers 2012 in theaters, and I was a grown man when I saw it, and I'm still a grown man now, but I was obviously younger. I mean, that movie came out almost 10 years ago, and it's interesting that there were people who were kids when that movie came out. Like, it's so weird to me because, you know, when you're a kid, the world seems like it's, you know, like, like you, you seem like you have this whole life ahead of you, and then when you start going in your 30s, it's like, man, like, I've already lived you know, almost half my life, you know, it's interesting looking back on it, how time flies, so if you're out there, enjoy life and enjoy every moment as much as you can, and I mean that, so we fast forward to the present day, and they have this scene of like Kate Bishop caught on the roof, then we go to Hawkeye, and he's going to an Avengers musical, it's like something like, you know, Captain America the musical, this scene popped me. Probably my favorite scene of the whole episode because it was so cheesy and corny that he's up there watching these actors uh, doing a a dance, you know, a musical, a live musical performance portraying him, the Avengers, Loki, all the events from 2012. So what they did with this episode is they established Kate as being a bit of a rebel and they established Clint as kind of being in peace, you know. He's with his family, he's going to like these musicals, he's having family time with them. And you know, honestly, I never saw Jeremy Renner as being a leading man in one of these types of shows, but he does have charisma. It's kind of like how I felt about Winter Soldier, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, you know, where I wasn't really sure if Anthony Mackie had the charisma to carry a show, and I still don't think he does, which is why Sebastian Stan was really good there on the show helping him out but by the end of the show falcon became a heck of a lot more likable and he became uh you know really was in put into a position to maybe be a serious character in the next captain america film so ultimately you know it worked out um and now with this show you know i hope that clint you know really you know jeremy renner that is really does kind of stand out on his own but for me I feel like the writing of this show is going to be important because really this episode was hit or miss there were some parts of it that really lost my attention they have this kind of slow sequence in an auction where they're auctioning off the Ronin stuff uh, the ninja assassin stuff and it turns to a big fight with an explosion and Kate is pretty much a ninja here so right around this part it, was, it wasn't until, like, the action started that I really was kind of losing interest. And I don't think I'm one of those, like, ADD kids who can't pay attention. I just felt like the pacing here really went to a halt. And so she ends up saving this dog, and uh, which really has, like, a John Wick vibe. And then Clint sees on TV, like, you know, what's going on and start to, starts to remember his time as Ronin. Um, and they have like a flashback and whatnot. So Kate discovers a dead body and then goes outside and she gets like attacked by a street gang with tons of weapons. And she's like, screw it. I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight out of this. So she takes them on. She straight up takes them on, but they become kind of tough for her. They, they start ganging up on her, but she is saved in an awesome scene by Hawkeye. I like this scene a lot because it had this really cool vigilante vibe to it that I really enjoyed. 
So at the end of the episode, he pretty much corners her and like removes her hood and realizes that it's a girl. And he's like, come on. And that really made me laugh. Um, so this is Kate and Hawkeye's first meeting. Obviously, it doesn't take a rocket science to figure out based on both the trailer and the way this episode was set up. Obviously, this is going to be the passing of the torch. Now, I don't know if Clint dies. I haven't looked into spoilers for this show because I want to kind of see it fresh. So I don't know if he if he dies or if he just retires. But I can definitely see Jeremy Renner retiring this character after this show and passing on the Hawkeye name to Kate Bishop for the future Young Avengers movie. You know, and it's sad because you know they are going to retire the classic Avengers, but they've already kind of, they're already on their way to doing that. You know, uh, we've got the only ones left are Hawkeye, Thor and Hulk, as far as the original six go. So, uh, it makes sense. They're going to do that. And I like the fact they're actually doing that as opposed to just killing them off or just writing them out in a very lazy way. They're actually going to have a transition. And I like that. So, what about episode two? Well, episode two of Hawkeye was called Hide and Seek. So she tells him her name is Kate Bishop and, you know, she realizes he's Hawkeye or whatever. And he's all like, you're a kid, you know, because, damn, a kid took the Ronin suit and is making people think that Ronin is back. You know what I'm saying? And so the episode begins to establish this kind of relationship. I mean, it is like a father-daughter thing where she looks up to him. He's like asking her, where'd you learn how to fight like that? You know, she took martial arts and she's all like, are you assessing the situation? Like she's trying to get into his head, like, cause she sees him as being this, um, grandiose, you know, superhero that she saw on TV and saw, you know, in the first episode, the prologue. She's, you know, this, it's a classic story. I mean, it's the the fanboy coming of age. And, and, you know, it's very similar to if you're a fan of My Hero Academia, you know, that kind of story where it's like you start off as a fanboy for somebody else and then that person kind of becomes your player coach and then you evolve and, and eventually, you know, maybe not take over, but be, become who you were born to be or become who you want to be because of the teachings of that person. It's a classic story. It's been told a million times. You know, I mean, hell, they even did it in the MCU with Iron Man being Spider-Man's mentor. This is a bit different because I don't think that Peter really idolized, uh, was that much of a, I mean, he definitely idolized Tony, but he wasn't that much of a fanboy for Tony uh, like this. You know what I mean? I really like their interaction when they go back to her place because you can tell he doesn't respect her. She's just a kid, but she's such a fangirl. Like, it's it's comedy, but it's not like ha-ha comedy. It's more so like, I get this. And I usually enjoy these kind of like, you know, action buddy cop type of stories. So for me personally, I could dig the show if it's like this. If it has this kind of humor and, and kind of dry wit from Jeremy Renner and her kind of evolving. I, we'll see where it goes. But of course, they're not done because here come the Molotov cocktails. So they start to warm up to each other, but the Ronin is being framed, and the press seems to think the Roman, the Roman, the Ronin is, you know, back and causing problems, and she's all like, you know, feeling bad about it or whatever. Maybe not bad, but like it felt like she was concerned about it, you know. And then he's like, "I told you that suit was trouble." Like even he's acknowledging that, you know, the Ronin needs to probably stay dead, you know. And that's too bad we never really got a Ronin movie. We got that one scene, uh, which honestly, like I said earlier, I never pictured or never thought that Jeremy Renner can capture, like, can capture that leading man charisma. They could carry his own movie on his own. And maybe that's why they gave him a TV show and not a movie as opposed to Natasha, who got the Black Widow show, you know, or the Black Widow movie. Ugh, you know what I mean? Um, I, I wonder about that. Or maybe... Um, it could be that maybe Scar Johansson negotiated for that. I mean, I really don't know, but you know, this is fine. I, I get why they're doing it and they got to, they're trying to give Kate Bishop a slow burn. I understand what they're doing. Will the show be good all the way through though? That's the question. I should talk a bit about Vera Farmiga playing Kate's mom. She was good. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Vera Farmiga is pretty much always good in everything she does. I never thought we'd actually see LARPing in the MCU, but I guess it makes sense considering the world that we're in. That was a pretty interesting sequence, just having Clint 
not know what LARPing is. And I feel like they put that in there for some of the older people uh, who who watch the MCU because the MCU is viewed by people in their 40s and 50s. I've seen it. When I went to Endgame, there's old people there. So I guess they put that in to explain it to them. And Clint's kind of like, all right, like confused. I like that scene. But actually seeing Jeremy Renner as Clint Barton doing the LARPing was wacky. This was this was wacky. Now again, I want to tell you the way I'm feeling about the show right now is I'm having fun watching it. Like I'm not fully invested in this show yet, but I am having fun watching it, but I can kind of see this being a show that I'm probably not going to watch more than once. You know, I might go back and watch WandaVision again cuz that was a lot of fun, especially in the middle episodes, but so far these MCU shows have been, you know, cool and they do build up things. But the only one so far that I've really been truly into watching more than once has been Loki. And I haven't seen it more than once yet, but I know I will. Um, just because, you know, the Tom Hiddleston and, you know, Owen Wilson, that charisma, it's a lot of fun. This is good. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just, I don't know if I'm going to be re-watching this multiple times. Maybe when I'm going back and I'm redoing Phase 4 again in a few years. But uh, it, it's it's fine for what it is, right? The conversation with Hawkeye and the guy who had his suit was hilarious. Come on, man. You're a superhero in real life. You know, this is the closest I'm ever going to get. I mean, that's something I would say, you know. I really like how the show finds Clint kind of dealing with his own fame here. Like, these people, they know who he is. He's famous for all the times that he saved them and... We haven't really had too much of it. There's a little bit of it in Falcon and Winter Soldier. And, of course, in Iron Man, too. That's kind of the first time we really saw, like, the the public and the, the way that they kind of view, you know, the superheroes. And also in the first Avengers. But, you know, here we have kind of Clint just meeting regular citizens and them kind of showing their appreciation while also marking out for him. And, you know, I like that. I like that we're seeing that. Uh, you don't really see that too often in these shows. They never have enough time or in the movies. But here, they're they're giving it time and they're making it important that these heroes are appreciated, which is going to be the opposite of Spider-Man in No Way Home. But, you know, we'll see when that movie comes out in a month. So they have this scene with, uh, this is kind of cool, with uh, Eleanor, <clears throat> Eleanor, who is uh, Kate Bishop's, mom played you know the one played by Vera Farmiga and she's having dinner with with her and with um her new fiance which is Dak or I mean uh Jack his name is Jack and it turns out that this guy is going to eventually I don't know if he already is or he'll turn into the swordsman who is uh, one of the Avengers old 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 villains from one of the early early Avengers like the 60s Avengers and um interestingly enough so where they're bringing in some characters from the past right here the coming of the swordsman and i'm looking forward to seeing if we actually see him become the swordsman here and i picked up on that from the fencing scene because he's they're fencing so they're, they're already teasing it you know even midway through the episode i was surprised to see hawkeye getting jumped by the tracksuit mafia i thought we were done with them but I guess they're going to be recurring characters in this thing. And while this is going on, Kate is trying to get a hold of Clint because she notices that when the swordsman was going to give her the little candy, there was like a clue there. You know, this is all like kind of a mystery going on. And I kind of like it. Again, I'm, I'm not super into this show right now. If I'm being honest, I'm not like super invested. I'm going to keep watching it, but there's things I do like. There's I, I could be a little bit, maybe a little bit better, a bit more... Um, Maybe tweak the comedy a bit, just a little bit, but um, but so far so good. Like for example, you know, he Clint gets kidnapped and it's it's all a big goof. Like he's not even remotely worried, which you know it's funny. Like it's funny to me, but it's definitely got a different tone. Like I was expecting it to be more like the Falcon and Winter Soldier, where it's more like a serious espionage story. And maybe we will we are going to get there at some point, but um. This show is really wacky. The tracksuit mafia, like, that's wacky to me. And I'm not complaining. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just, I feel like, I, you know what? Honestly, I actually don't, it's not really an issue. Like, I guess maybe I just had different expectations. Maybe I just thought it was going to be more serious. But it's it's fine. Like, it's it's actually not terrible. I do wish that the episodes were a bit shorter, right? But it's it, it's fun to watch, at least this first time. I don't think I'm going to revisit it, but it is fun to watch.
And then her showing up and botching the Batman 89 entrance through the glass, like, that was cool. You know, it, it's fine. Like I said, it's, uh, honestly, this episode, episode two, this final part, when she tries to save Clint, made it really enjoyable. Like, it's my favorite part of the episode. The episode ends with the introduction of who I believe is Echo. So we're finally going to see Echo here. Um, wacky show, like I said, first impressions are, I enjoyed it, it definitely felt like the MCU, uh, you know, with, with the comedy mixed with the action, you know, the sequences are great, Jeremy Renner's a good actor, that the acting was fine, I can't criticize that whatsoever, it's just, like I said, the replayability of the show, I question it, because I don't know if I'm gonna go back and watch it again, um, but so far, I am curious to see where it goes, um, and how it ends up leading to Kate Bishop being, uh, you know, the next Hawkeye. However, I will be honest with you, it doesn't seem to be a big priority. I feel like right now, the multiverse storyline is the main focus of the MCU. So stuff like this and Eternals is going to take a back seat to stuff like Loki, Doctor Strange 2, and Spider-Man. So I can't say this just yet, okay? I can't say it just yet, but I do feel like this show could probably wait. Like, I feel like if you're really invested in the multiverse, you want to see Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, and then the consequences of this show might not even impact the MCU until Phase 5 or later in Phase 4. So to me, it might not be something you have to watch right away, but whatever. Two episodes are up on Disney+. Plus. Most of us are going to have days off this week, you know, because of Thanksgiving in the United States, so you might as well check it out. That's my review. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I'll talk to you all soon.